The, the summer is a, a popular time for a, a wedding, uh, and normally they're, they're quite joyful occasions. So most people are, are happy to accept the invitation to come to a wedding. But one of Jesus' parables speaks about a wedding that people are reluctant to go to, where the, the invited guests all turn him down, giving excuses of one kind or another. It's a, a parable of a king who is going to celebrate the, the wedding feast of his son, and so he sends out his servants to, the, to the, the invited guests that say, it is time, everything is ready, the food is, is prepared, come and, uh, and, and join, in, come in, and join in the, the joy of this wedding, come and celebrate this wedding. And uh, what is, but one gives one excuse, another gives another excuse, and, and no one comes. They all have more important things to do than come to the wedding of the lamb, or the, the wedding of the king's son. So, so what is the king to do? All the food is ready. Well, is he just to, to throw it all into the bin? No, rather, he, he goes and sends his servants to find anyone that they can, any, any, wherever, sends out his servants to the whole world to gather in uh, people and fill the wedding hall, and they do. But no, the, uh, there's yet another twist at the end of this parable. When the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now, in this parable, the king is God the Father, or the king represents God the Father, who invited the chosen people, the Jews, to celebrate the wedding feast of the Lamb in heaven. But by their refusal to accept Christ, they... Uh, they rejected this, and so you know, after their, re their refusal, then the, the invitation went out to, to all of mankind. But among those who accepted the invitation, some of them were found unworthy to share in the banquet. They had no wedding garment, and so they wind up being cast out. They are no better than those who refused the invitation. But what is this wedding garment, and why doesn't this man have one? You know, it's a, why is it that this man has no wedding garment? So what is this? Now, the king's invitation to enter the kingdom of heaven is an invitation to enter the church, an invitation to come and celebrate the wedding of the Lamb. Repent and believe in the gospel, Jesus says at the beginning of the gospel of Mark, and then at the end he says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And so you know, those who believe and are baptized are those who accept the king's invitation. They receive sanctifying grace, accompanied by uh, a whole uh, court of, of virtues and, and gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which enable them to live as sons of God. But of all these virtues that they receive, the most precious and, in a way, the most fragile is charity. This charity is the most precious to us because it allows us to enjoy God in, in heaven. It allows us to love as, as God loves. But it's also the most fragile of all the virtues, because a single mortal sin will eliminate this virtue, will strip it from our soul, drive it forth, and drive the, as it drives the, the Trinity out of our soul. So the wedding garment of the parable, what we need to participate in this wedding, is charity, or, or sanctifying grace. And poverty is no excuse for not having this wedding garment. You know, perhaps if you were invited you know, to a, a royal wedding, and you know, many people would like to go to a royal wedding, they might wonder, where will I get a, a suitable clothing to wear to this? But this is not just the wedding of any king, this is the wedding uh, of the king of heaven. This is the, the wedding of the, well, the, son's, the king's son, who, who indeed is also a king. And so what could we have of our own that would possibly be, be sufficient for this great occasion? But we receive this wedding garment of charity because you know, our, the God, the, the Father, who invites us, at the same time realizes that he must supply for us something suitable to, to wear. And so he clothes our soul with, with charity, clothes it with sanctifying grace. And, and so poverty is no excuse. There's no excuse for not having received one of these wedding garments. And so you know, when the, the king comes and finds someone with no wedding garment it, at his, his feast, he, he rightly asks, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And the man is speechless because 
What can he say? He did indeed receive a wedding garment, but he destroyed it by his sin. He destroyed it by his own fault. And so you know, when he, he entered, he did have, a, have one, but now he has none anymore because uh, his sin has, has uh, stripped his soul of charity and, and grace. So he has no excuse. He can say nothing. He can't even make up a lie because God would know perfectly well that it was a lie. God knows the truth too well to, to be lied to. So the man can say nothing and you know, in his silence he is cast out and receives the just punishment for his sin. He winds out in that outer darkness to wail and gnash his teeth. For all eternity he'll be tormented by the knowledge that he's in hell by his own fault. And so you know, imagine what how terrible that is. And the children at Fatima heard that terrible wailing. They heard it on the 13th of July in 1917, when Our Lady showed them hell just for an instant, showed them hell where the poor sinners go. They were terrified, they trembled with fear. Lucia cried out. And if it hadn't been for Our Lady's promise of, of heaven for the children, just that instant of seeing hell would have been enough to make them die of, of, uh, to make them die of, of fear and horror, they thought. And yet, most people are really quite careless with this wedding garment they receive from their Heavenly Father. They, they commit mortal sins, perhaps, to prove uh, to their boyfriend or girlfriend uh, that they love them. Or, or they, they prove, uh, commit a mortal sin on a dare to show that they're not afraid, that they're tough. Or they, they commit a, a sin just to, to get ahead in life. Or again, simply out of laziness. This is perhaps one of the most terrible things, the sins we, we commit uh, out of sheer laziness, not bothering perhaps to go to Sunday Mass when we could perfectly well uh, do so. And so that precious gift from God, charity, sanctifying grace, this garment is, is soiled and torn and, and stripped off and, and trampled underfoot. And where are you going to get another one? It wasn't something that you made yourself or obtained by your own ability. No, it's Your ordinary clothes are just not good enough for the wedding of the King's Son, for the wedding of the Son of God. It's not enough to be a nice person in order to get into heaven. You need God's grace. An otherwise nice person who has rejected God's invitation to baptism cannot enter the kingdom of heaven uh, out of his niceness. That's just, you know, that's something human, but we need to, to have something superhuman, something supernatural in order to be worthy of heaven. And again, a baptized person who receives the sanctifying grace, but then commits a grave sin, won't get sanctifying grace grace back by being a nice person, but he has to go to confession. And you know, sometimes we're afraid to go to confession because we're embarrassed to, to tell the priest what we've done. Um, but you know, we have to think that it, we shouldn't really be ashamed. I mean, certainly it's a, a shameful to commit the sin, but there's no shame in confessing the sin. Uh, to confess the sin is, is something good. And you know, if we that still doesn't convince us to avoid the embarrassment. You know, realize that if you, if you don't confess your sins here on earth, then at the general judgment, everyone will know about them. You'll be, all of, of, of humanity, all the angels, before all of them, you, you'll be seen there on the side of the, those uh, condemned to hell. Because you, know, you, were, you were too embarrassed uh, to say it in front of you know, one priest, uh, in, in secret, who wasn't going to, to, uh, to throw it in your face, wasn't going to make life hard for you. Now, you know, because you were unwilling to say it uh, to that one person, now it's revealed before everyone. Our Lord says, there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed. But, uh, of course, it would be far better to avoid committing that sin in the first place. So how can we keep our wedding garment intact and unstained? How can we keep from losing this, this precious gift of God. Well, no, how do we keep our ordinary clothes from getting soiled or torn? We put on an apron. So, no, is there a, a kind of apron that we could wear in order to protect this wedding garment that we received from God? And yes, it's called a scapular. That's what a scapular is originally. At the, early with the, when the monks, the, the monks had to go out into the, into the fields, clear the or, well, go out into the forest and, and uh, chop down trees and clear fields, and, and they had a lot of work to do, and so well, they, they put on a, a sort of apron, that, uh, something called a scapular, because it hung from their shoulders, the scapula, and then, you know, it hung down in, in the front, there was a strip of cloth in the front and a strip in the back. And so, with time, 
that scapular came to be something that was no longer uh, just worn as an apron, but but that had a, a symbolic value. It had became the garment that was most uh, distinctive of of, uh, of monks and other and religious in the in the West. And so today, uh, you know, you would see a, a monk wearing an apron to keep his scapular clean instead of wearing a scapular to keep the rest of his habit clean. But now that because the scapular became the distinctive part of the religious habit, it was what was given uh, to those uh, laymen who wanted to associate themselves, to lay people who wanted to associate themselves with the, the charism of, of the institute, with the, the Benedictines or the, the, uh, the Franciscans or the, the Carmelites, or they received a, a scapular. And the Carmelite scapular was brown, as their, their habit was brown, and so their tertiaries and others who received it received a brown scapular as a shot sign of sharing in the, in the charism and in the, the spiritual goods of the Carmelites. And with time, since that scapular wasn't intended to, uh, to protect uh, their, their clothing and, and because it was often worn under the clothes, it, it got uh, smaller you know, because it, it was only needed to be a symbol. So today, you know, the scapulars you see don't, don't cover the whole, whole front of, of a person. They're, they're just a little thing, uh, you know, an inch or so, uh, well, you know, perhaps an inch wide and a little, little longer than that. And so you know, the, the Carmelite scapular is uh, particularly loved by Catholics because of this promise that he who dies in it will not suffer eternal fire, you know, that this will, will keep our, our wedding garment clean. You know? So we will keep our, our wedding garment intact, keep us ready to, to participate at the wedding of this king's son. You know? And for to not suffer eternal fire means to be saved, and that means to die in the grace of God. So we can understand the, the brown scapular, which has its origin as an apron, as a, a protection for our wedding garment, as a kind of, of spiritual apron. And how, does, how does this apron work? First of all, it's the, a sign of placing oneself under Our Lady's protection. It's a sign of consecrating yourself to her, giving your, yourself to her and trusting your life to her. And one who, who takes his consecration seriously will invoke the aid of, of Our Lady and will strive to imitate her virtues. Now this, well, they say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and, and certainly, you know, if we, we love the saints, if we love Our Lady, if we love Jesus, we will imitate them, imitate above all their virtues. Now, this habit is therefore a reminder to the one who wears it to practice virtue, and it's a, also a way of calling upon Our Lady, saying, I have taken this, this commitment of, of following you, and so uh, the habit also calls upon Our Lady to, to send you the grace to make this possible, to make it possible to imitate her virtues, to make it possible for you to keep your, your wedding garment unsoiled and intact. So it's by, by grace and by virtue that we avoid those sins that would stain or, or damage or, or even destroy our, our wedding garment, that would, would uh, weaken charity, which is what a, 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 a venial sin does, or, or destroy it as a, a mortal sin does. And you know, secondly, if one should fall into in, grave sin, then by wearing the scapular, one calls upon Our Lady to, to obtain the grace of, of conversion, the grace of repentance, and the, the possibility to make a confession. And certainly it goes, or should go, without saying that the brown scapular would be of no use if it were seen as simply a way of, of sinning and getting away with it. Our Lady will have no part of, of such a, a plot to offend God. But it can help even a hardened sinner to obtain the grace of repentance, to obtain the, the chance to, to confess. And so if you, you don't have one of these aprons, then you would do well uh, to get one, to, to give your, your wedding garment, which you know, surely you hope to, you try to protect uh, with you know, the ordinary means of avoiding sin. Uh, but it would be good to, to protect it also in this way, by asking Our Lady's <coughs> aid. You know, at the end of the, uh, the October apparition at Fatima, she showed the, herself as Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel is always shown uh, carrying a, a scapular, holding that out to us uh, as a, a uh, you know, a, a, an offer to us. You know, put this on and, and uh, it will help to, to protect you, defend you, put you under my protection. And so, you know, this is so very important because we can't really afford to take any, any risks with this wedding garment of ours. We cannot, as I said, do anything to enter heaven uh, without it. And so we must absolutely have that garment when we end our earthly lives. Praised be Jesus and Mary. Amen.